The last thing I remember is of the paramedics saying, Ashley, you were in a horrible car accident and you lost your leg. And then I woke up and realized it was reality. I did lose my leg. My brain injury from the accident caused me to have short-term memory loss. My doctor decided to refer me to a neuropsychologist. Neuropsychology is the study of brain behavior relationships. Uh, there is a research component that is connected to neuroscience. Um, and then the clinical component is using what we learn uh, from neuroscience about brain behavior relationships and applying that to real life problems that people might have. I see myself as um, the diagno diagnostician uh, in the same way as maybe a physiatrist, a rehabilitation medicine person who will say, these are the issues Mm -hmm. and then deal with the treaters like you guys. The neuropsychologist interviewed me and asked me about my medical history, my symptoms, and she even talked uh, to my family members. How the brain works so that you look at cognition and emotion and behavior in terms of what we know about how the brain functions. It's really evaluation and feedback. And you know, I, I score everything, look it all over, and then mm -hmm tell them what I think, write up a detailed report, and communicate with treaters. Mm -hmm. That's really what I do. And then she made me take a bunch of cognitive tests, including IQ tests and questionnaires. The neuropsychologist told me that the test would help determine what was going on in my brain and really why I was having problems. She began with the Weschler intelligence test. She did many assessments such as the Halstead Retin Assessment, which tested for aphasia and other cognitive impairments. In the beginning, it was really hard for me to talk, to comprehend, to understand anything, really. My cognitive deficits and my amputation led me to have a lot of trouble getting dressed, playing with my dog, working out, and activities of daily living, such as dancing to Beyonce. My neuropsychologist referred me to an occupational therapist, and I thought, what? I don't need a job right now. But I quickly learned that OTs are superheroes. Occupational therapists and neuropsychologists collaborated by exchanging information and developing treatment plans. I thought I would never recover, but look at me now. I got the eye of the tiger. Nowadays, uh, so much more is known that you can actually get a degree just in neuropsychology. Um, but although most programs still have a clinical psychology component as well as a neuropsychology component, the neuropsychological part of it is more evaluation. Okay. It's only recently that neuropsychology has gotten more involved in cognitive rehabilitation and other kinds of treatment you can get a PhD in clinical psychology with a focus on neuropsychology. Okay. And in some programs now, you can just go for a PhD in clinical neuropsychology. It always involves um, an internship in a clinical neuropsychology um, 
setting. And it also always involves a dissertation and um, learning about how to do research. The primary setting is in hospitals of various kinds. I was at Children's Hospital for a lot of years in hematology oncology, working mostly with kids with brain tumors. Mm -hmm. um, and also kids with head injuries and other neurosurgical kinds of issues. So there's a lot of um, reason to have those kinds of evaluations working in a team mm -hmm. in, in hospitals. Mm -hmm. um, I Then in, um, if you're doing research, there's a lot in universities uh, and in teaching. I'm, I'm on faculty at UCLA also, but in the clinical mm -hmm. faculty. And I do some research, but mostly what I'm doing is clinical. So um, I would say probably the second most uh, common is private practice. I see. And then uni university settings. So those are the three, hospital, university, and private practice. Mm -hmm. In occupational therapy, you'll often see kids fairly young um, if they're having, you know, kids who are clumsy or kids who are having um, problems with activities of daily living, mm -hmm. um, autistic kids, you'll get these kids fairly young. Then the kids start school and the question becomes, you know, are they having school problems just because of their motor planning issues or, you know, or their sensory issues or whatever else is going on or are there other cognitive and academic issues? Mm -hmm. Those are the kids I need to see. When you feel that there might be something holding them back mm -hmm. that's beyond uh, what you are working on. Mm -hmm. I don't like the disease model, and I see a lot of what I do as in a much more holistic way of looking at somebody's strengths and weaknesses, their learning style, um, mm -hmm. their uh, approach to the world, and how we can improve that. The kinds of practitioners I will refer to mm -hmm. are psychologists for therapy, um, psychiatrist or neurologist if I feel medication is necessary. Um, schools, special ed type environments and mm -hmm. or educational therapists and tutors, mm -hmm. speech therapists, mm -hmm. occupational therapists, mm -hmm. um, and then sometimes just physicians of other kind. Any kid who has any kind of encephalopathy, any kind of brain issue will often have cognitive issues as well as perceptual motor mm -hmm. issues. and. You know, I can evaluate and say what they need cognitively or academically, but I can't help with activities of daily living, and the parents often have no clue as to how to help their kid just go through the day. And that's where mm -hmm. occupational therapists are invaluable. Mm -hmm. Learn. Um, as much as you can about um, sort of the therapeutic part of interacting with uh, individuals and families. Um, you learn techniques, but there's a lot of art in being able to encourage people to access those techniques. It's a very fine line between pushing somebody and letting them slide and, you know, not um, knowing exactly how to encourage um, and when to encourage. And I, I think that that's, that's the real art of a good occupational therapist, of knowing how to be more than just a technician, mm -hmm. seeing the kid as a whole kid and the family system as a whole family system and figuring out what's the most important place to intervene and how to best accomplish it. And be collaborative. Mm -hmm. It's because it's never just you. It's all, the, the children are always more complex than one discipline. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Well, thank you. You're welcome. My pleasure. Thank you. <laughs> oh. <laughs> what? Wait. I don't know if that's. Does that look like I have a leg? No, but you have to. Bad. Yeah. Let me know if you guys want me to zoom out.
Yes. Um, can I stop it? Ha, 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 ha.